A look back to game four of last year's championship series. Larry Bird dominated the game, scoring 29 points and pulling down 21 rebounds. The Celtics changed the tone of the series when Kevin McHale tackled Kurt Rambis on this breakaway. And it became a series of confrontations. Five seconds left now. Robert Parrish stole a Magic Johnson pass, forcing the game into overtime. ML Carr clinched the game for the Celtics, tying the series at two games apiece. And this first period has been a game free of the rough stuff, with the Lakers leading by four. And in Hollywood, you have the likes of Neil Diamond and Burt Backrack, two giants of the music industry. And everyone knows Tom Selleck, Magnum P.I. Tom? <laughs> So far, it's been kind of a clean game as far as the physical stuff. Really has, and I think the words of the commissioner have cleaned it up, but that's a legitimate tactic to use fouls. The rule book doesn't say you can't foul, it just says you will be penalized if you foul. And that's been going on for years. Wilt ought to know. They used to use it against him. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn with you here at the Forum in Inglewood. Start of the second period. Celtics trail by four. Magic Johnson is the double man, and Kevin McHale on a hot night has 12 points so far. He is 6 of 8 from the field. Now, they went to that matchup so often in the last couple of games that the uh, Lakers finally found out how to play it. And now the Celtics are incorporating other people. Wedman in the game here as McAdoo misses, and Bird gets another rebound. Four rebounds for Larry Bird. They're honoring Wedman outside, and the Lakers surround Robert Parrish, and Mitch Kupchak commits the foul. Let's look at the shooting percentages in the first period, awfully close, with the Lakers shooting 50%, and the rebounding story, Boston in front. Celtics looking to tie the game. Dennis Johnson does, and we have our fifth tie of the ball game. He is coming into his own in this game. He plays the big ones. MVP of the 1979 playoffs when he played for Seattle. Dennis Johnson. He responded in game four last year. Kupchak going strong to the hoop. And Parrish defended well. Mikhail the rebound. And the Celtics looking to take a lead. Last lead was 6-4. to four. Bird has a lot of time. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Johnson, back to Bird, who's fouled. Good play by Dennis Johnson, who went from one corner to the other. Very fine patience to move the Laker defense. The more you use their feet playing defense, the less they get easy layups. Look at all the way over to the side, the packed in defense, and then Bird slides in once the defense extends out. McAdoo with his first personal foul, and Larry Bird on the line. Dennis Johnson has eight points and seven assists. He was the middleman with those two Lakers. It's amazing what a couple of outside shots will do to a packed-in defense. All of a sudden, they start thinking, we've got to come out, particularly when you've got a hot outside player. The and Celtics have outscored the Lakers 10-1 to now to take a 34-32 lead. Overplaying Worthy, denying him the pass, and Robert Parrish got burned on that one. They can't get too close to Worthy if you're bigger than him. You've got to back up. He'll beat you with speed. Lakers will be bringing in Kareem and Byron Scott at the next dead ball. Nearly two minutes gone by, second period. It's been kind of a chess match so far. Wedman with his first outside shot, misses. McAdoo clears. Lakers have not been able to show off their fast break the way they did in game three. McAdoo pops. And McHale clears. Dennis Johnson looking inside. Good position for Parrish. When he gets up quickly into the low post, that eliminates a lot of double teams because the guards are in him position to drop down and help. Dennis Johnson is on Magic Johnson. They switch off now on the pick. Dennis is on McAdoo. Would like to get back to Magic. McAdoo is open. The Lakers play that well to get a free man. Well, they are being forced more and more into that half-court offense, and McAdoo's responding. Inside, and a whistle and a foul against the Lakers. Kareem was going to come back in the game, then went back to the bench. We'll see him soon, we're sure. 9.07 remaining in the second period, a timeout. Beautiful Marina Del Rey, live in Los Angeles before 7 p.m. out on the West Coast, but from the outside beaches to the recesses of the Forum, 
Here's Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Dick, thank you. You know, Pat Riley may be into high fashion, but he's also into high technology. Deep under the forum, as Dick said, this is what's called Riley's Video Room. Edit machines, television, videotape. What happens during the first half is that assistant coach Davey Wool sits up in the stands. He calls down here key plays. Plays where they think the Lakers may need adjustments. Now, Billy Desser here, who might be called the Lakers' 13th man, says they're working right now on the Lakers' breakdown on defense against the Celtics' half-court offense. So, while you're at the half with Wilton Brent, the Lakers will be at the movies. Back to you, Dick. And now I know why Dave Wall went to the University of Pennsylvania. You had to go to Ivy Leagues to figure all this stuff out, Tommy. <laughs> now, look at those eyes. They go back and forth. I think he's a fine young coach, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised within a short period of time he gets a head job someplace. Pat Riley has always loved videotapes and the use of them. He's kind of a impressive, imaginative coach. His interests go deeper than the sport. Harris inside. Good play over Kareem. So Kareem is back in the game, and so is Byron Scott. And it is 38 to 36 Boston. And McHale is very patient at finding the open man. That's a good sign for the Celtics. Cooper gets the handoff and Bird fouls him. That was a good play by the Lakers. And Larry Bird saw it coming. Now there's Wedman who's backing in trying to stop the pass into Kareem. But all of a sudden the speed advantage that Cooper has allows him to get right by Wedman. And Wedman just runs into Kareem. Nothing he can do. So here's Cooper on the line. Foul is on Paris. Michael Cooper had 22 points off the bench in game number two. To spark the Lakers, but he is known as one of the best defensive specialists in the NBA, and he's done some fine play against Larry Bird over the years. Well, he gets right up in Larry Bird's jersey and tries to make Bird put it on the floor and take away that outside shot. So another tie at 38, our eighth of the ball game. Parrish high post. Cooper denying Wedman with the ball, so he's not on Bird. Now he is. He switches off to Larry. Seven on the shot clock. McHale against double team. Hard off the glass, but there's Bird on the weak side, and they're going to call a Laker foul inside. Well, Bird has been hitting outside and also taking Worthy inside to try and keep him close to the Celtic basket so that he can't get out on the wing to make those devastating stuffs on the fast break. The foul is on James Worthy, his second, and Larry Bird goes to the line. He has refused to talk about his ailments. He's got bone chips in the elbow, an ankle injury, and he's got that jam finger. But he told us yesterday, this is the best I have felt in a playoff game. I think he's okay, but I think while he was playing through those injuries, he developed some bad habits that he's trying to work himself through. Eight minutes, ten seconds remaining in the first half. 40 to 38, the Celtics in front. Double team and a hard one on Kareem. Feeding Worthy. They got the inside shot. The Lakers couldn't convert it. Now the Celtics trying to open up to four. Basket hanging is Cooper. And the Lakers tie it up. Those two fast break opportunities may be the story of this season. The Celtics had a four on two. They couldn't get that speed going, but the Lakers did when they had it. McHale goes in, misses. Here's a four on two for the Lakers this time. Byron Scott. Wedman is playing a crashing the boards kind of style for the Celtics, and he has seen a lot of action so far in this game.